We are here in Tallinn. This is the capital of Estonia. This is a tiny country, just 1.3 million people, but it is home to one of the most digitally advanced societies in the world. And in the conversations we've been having with the government as well as with entrepreneurs, a big part of that growth is coming from the healthcare sector. All digital records are online here. Prescriptions are online. There's a concentrated effort for data to be put online and to also protect that with laws. And a lot of the reason that this has been successful is because of collaboration between the public and private sectors. The Estonian government has made big pushes to try to entice entrepreneurs and startups here. They have a program called e-residency that basically allows you to start a company here even if you don't live in Estonia. You can also have a digital signature which speeds up the process of getting documents through. So the idea is that it's easy to set up shop here. We asked uh, Estonian President Kirsty Kaljulaid about that country's efforts to entice startups and what it means for the high-tech society. Startup culture started with Skype. When Skype was sold, it had uh, Estonian creators, and part of them were Estonian. Skype is an Estonian development. The money came back here, started to look for new digital opportunities, possibilities. We now have four uh, unicorns in this country, four unicorns per uh, 1.3 million. I think it must be the densest breeding ground of unicorns <laughs> globally. So we cannot only attribute to e-residency. I think it's this development is is more linked to the fact that we have this legally safe environment. I think it became very clear to the world when things started to grow, go wrong, for example, for Facebook, who has had to apologize for overstepping, but what? There was no legal space it overstep, overstepped. Legal space has to be created. What is right and what is wrong in digital world? And since Estonia has this space, you can use it as a sandbox for new ideas in a safe form not worrying that maybe afterwards I have to apologize that I offered the digital service and, and then somebody found a way to misuse it, even if no laws were broken. So we offer this kind of digital sandbox. What was behind Estonia's decision to really choose to invest in this digitalization process? In Estonia, it was not the question of, uh, well, uh, firing people from uh, civil service in order to cut costs and replace with digital. We simply were only developing our, uh, our service offer to our people. And we did it straight away digitally because uh, it was simply cheaper, easier. And also, I mean, people found it convenient. And now the process has uh, become citizen driven. Talk about any lessons Estonia might offer to other countries looking to become a digital society like you are here. If you want to be uh, the best in digital, the best in AI, you cannot do it simply by, I don't know, spending public money or doing clever public procurement, which is also very important, but well, most countries cannot go it alone. So what we do here is we become quick uh, technological followers, offering private sector a safe legal environment to, well, try out their ideas here. And we do it in a format which is also safe to our citizens. The president talked about how Estonia's digitalization process began as soon as it gained independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. So this has been a long effort for them, and that's something that a lot of people here haven't known a society that hasn't been high tech. We talked to some startups and to some entrepreneurs who said they've tried to do business in other countries and they found it there's a lot more barriers when not everything is online, when you don't have a digital ID, which is sort of the cornerstone of this digital society here that lets you do everything from banking to voting to your health records. So we'll have to see if this is a model that other bigger, more complex countries would be able to adapt. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.